Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Roger Dubbs, and I'm a developer at Tableau. I love creating great new features for you to use. The one thing I know when we develop a new feature and release it is that you are going to come up with ways of using that feature that we never thought of. Our speakers today surprise and amaze us all the time with their custom visualizations. Zen master Klaus Schulte has created beautiful dashboards with curved lines, radial coordinate systems, creative polygons, and more. He won Iron Viz Europe 2018 by deconstructing the Big Mac index, um, including a custom trapeze chart. Tableau ambassador Yvette Kovac has visualized topics from immigration to plastic pollution to Barbie dolls using flower charts, spiral calendars, and more. They both are masters of creating completely custom visualizations with Tableau. Please join me in welcoming Klaus Schulte and Ivan Kovac. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session, Surprise Me. And speaking of surprises, we assume you like to be surprised. Is that right? Yes. That's great. Because this is exactly what we are going to do now. And we, that's me. I'm Klaus. I'm a professor of management accounting at Münster University of Applied Sciences in Germany. And I'm thrilled and excited to present this session together with one of my favorite designers from the Tableau universe, with Yvette. Thank you, Klaus. Hey, everyone. Hands up for those who love data visualization. Yeah, everyone. It's That's great. great. That's great. I am Yvette, and we both love it when data can be sculpted into beautiful shapes. So this is us here today, but there is another one who delivered part of the session before a Tableau conference in Berlin this year. And I am lucky because I had a chance to see your Klaus and Ludovic session there. I think everyone who was there would agree with me that you rocked that stage. Thank you, Yvette. <laughs> Please send some greetings over to France to Ludovic as well. Today, we want to talk about custom visualizations. Custom visualizations are visuals that are not out of the box, so you won't find them in Show Me, for example. But you can create them in Tableau when you think of Tableau as a canvas to draw on. And today, we would like to share our most precious techniques in our finest European accents <laughs> to enable all of you to create custom visualizations. To get into the topic or to share a definition, let me maybe share the most custom visualization you can imagine. And this historic visual um, caught my eyes when I scrolled my Twitter timeline. It was already back in January. And honestly, I really don't know if there is an R function for when you run out of screen. <laughs> but what I know is that there is a Tableau technique. And Johnny Walker, of course, does know too. So you might ask, why creating such a banded bar chart? What's the purpose of this? First of all, why not? I mean, you all know probably or have experienced you, you see something and you just want to recreate it in Tableau. Do we recommend to create such bar charts? Of course not. Please keep things simple when things are simple. Um, so we don't recommend it. But do we share the techniques to, to create such charts? Yes, of course, because it will help you to gain a deep understanding of how Tableau actually works. All right. I think not many people know about me. I'm a big fan of National Geographic maps. I don't collect any women's magazines, but every month I buy this uh, National Geographic. 
And I think you agree with me that it has stunning visuals. And one day, I saw a creation that totally captivated me. It had a nice and clean design, and the topic was something that interested me a lot. It's about marine plastic. Newborn fish are mistaking tiny bits of trash for food, and if they die, there will be fever big fish, and it could upset the food chain as well. So this is the visualization what inspired me to create its bandit form in Tableau. And I remembered a kind of bandit bar chart from Klaus's uh, public gallery. So that was a great time for collaboration. Yeah. Thanks to this unique chart, I had a chance to work together with this great man with Klaus. And yes, of course, we did the same visualization in Tableau. <laughs> we did it. Because, believe it or not, you can do almost anything you want in Tableau. What to expect from this session? As I've already said, we would like to enable you to create custom visualizations um, and to surprise your audiences as well, like we probably um, have done in our best-known visits. I, for example, I've created um, this trapezium tile map on the left side um, when I deconstructed the Big Mac index, and this is a custom map made of polygons, and I'm playing here with the analogy to a burger box. You know, Big Mac, burger, so th that was the idea here. And in just a few seconds, we will uh, introduce the techniques, um, how to draw with numbers, so this is the basic principle, and that most of the custom visualizations you can find around are nothing more like scatter plots. And I created this flower visualization which displayed data for race and gender for sub industries within tech. We will show you how to draw a curve in Tableau. And if you just take a look at the third viz on this slide, you will gain insight into how to color with numbers. So like I said, we want to share the techniques and this is the first and the major part of this session. We introduce the different techniques uh, that we have leveraged here, but we would also like to give you some ideas of how to use them in real-world business scenarios. So much fun ahead. Yeah, you are right. So much fun ahead, and it's going to be hard. But don't worry. We promise that by the end of the session, you will live within a whole new Tableau world. And no need to take notes because we just published a blog with all the slides, examples, and links to further resources. So you can find everything on Klaus's blog uh, at visjockey.com. Just sit back and enjoy. Are you ready? Woo! Woo! Yeah, great. Let's go into the details. Techniques. First, I would like to show you how to draw in Tableau. Uh, I'm quoting Jonathan Drummy here, again master of Tableau and then master Hall of Famer. You absolutely have to visit his blog, Drawing with Numbers. But I, have, I could have quoted many, many others from the community like Neil Richard or Marianne, Tristan, Tableau Twins, who I all admire very much. <laughs> so this is the basic principle of DataViz we draw pictures using data. I would like to demonstrate this principle by using a coordinator tool. Uh, it's developed by Spotify Lab, and I just became aware of in a tweet by Zach Bowder. Zach is a fellow community member from the US. He has drawn beautiful superhero-related stuff, so after the session, you should check his Tableau Public Gallery. All right. What does the tool do? You can upload an image. It processes that image and gives you back the X and Y coordinates in a simple CSV file. Then at this Tableau logo, I manually had to add a pass, a points order to tell Tableau how to connect the data points in Tableau and the new field which defines the different elements of this uh, logo. The next step, just bring this data set to the Tableau side and easily create lines using line mark, or if you 
would like to create a field object, just use the polygon mark type. And of course, you can do it on any shapes. If you create the Salesforce logo, please tweet it. <laughs> Sometimes we need to plot only some data points from an image. I would like to recommend you another free online service. This is the Mobile Fish tool. It allows you to upload an image and record the X and Y coordinates by mouse clicks and then save the data set, for example, into a CSV file or Excel file, it depends on you, and the next step, uh, bring it to Tableau. I used uh, this tool to get the coordinates for these rectangle shapes on this map projection uh, for strawberries. Let me give you another example. A couple of months ago, I went to Washington. I got the house's key from my boss. Do you know that the museums are free in DC? That's incredible. So one day, I visited the iconic Hersham Museum where I saw the Guerrilla Girls powerful exhibition about, art, about gender inequality at art departments. And I felt that it would be better to show this information more visually, not in a simple table view. I was thinking, about a circle in circle form in which the middle circle shows the proportion of women and the outer show the entire 100%. And I knew that I wanted to create a kind of colorful and playful design. So I used gradient instead of flat colors because the energy of this stunningly vibrant color transition can make the women, the inner part, stand out, right? At this point, you might think that, okay, these are simple shapes, but if that were true, where would the challenge be? <laughs> these are not shapes, it's made up of lines. Let's see how we can make it. I put this information from this table into a simple Excel file. It contains gender, our department, and percentage of faculty. Then and join the, the second data set, which holds data for the two circles. A circle is 360 degrees, therefore we have data from one to 720, if you just take a look at the route field. And yeah, this is already a data densification technique, and I think you, Klaus, you will yeah. explain this technique in details later. All right. Thanks to the root field from the second data set, we have the two circles, and just again. The inner circle will show the women part, and the outer circle shows the entire 100%. Let's draw these two circles in Tableau. So using a circle's trigonometry, we can easily draw the ring with sine and cosine function. As you can see, these are table calculations. We need to compute them to the root to get the two circles in Tableau. Let's compute it for the cosine and then the sine function. And there are the two rings. We want to display lines, so let's change the mark type from automatic to line. At this point, we need to stop for a minute because this is the default pass, what we got when we selected the line mark. But we want our line to zigzag from the top to the bottom of a circle by gender. So we need to calculate the right pass uh, for this example. And this pass will also be used for coloring the line as well. This is the calculation. What does it mean? So every angle between zero and 180 say the same, and every angle between 180 and 360 will have a new value between zero and 180. This is easy, right? Okay, let's use the stack calculation on the pass shaft in Tableau. With it, we can override the default uh, pass, the default lines. Yeah, it takes times uh, why Tableau can uh, draw the all lines. There are the lines, 
and just use the same calculation on the color. This is the best part. Select the beautiful gradient palette and set the start value to zero. I just changed and modified the size of the line, and here is the final viz. Or did I make a kind of radioactive frog spawn? That's awesome, Yvette. Thank you. A very important technique when it comes to custom visualizations is the everything is a scatter plot technique. It is again variously attributed to many, many people from the Tableau community, and I'm, uh, I'm naming, mentioning here Joe Mako, for example. You all probably know a scatter plot. Having two continuous builds on, on rows and columns, uh, so why is this a big thing? Why is there a technique called everything is a scatter plot? The main idea here is to bring in discrete dimensions without dividing the vis into different sections or get rid of the grid. Again, we already know the scatter plot is having two continuous pills on rows and measure um, on, on rows and columns, and we do want to integrate further dimensions into our X and Y coordinates. And this is actually something that I did in a makeover Monday um, in a visualization earlier this year where I had the idea to combine uh, a hex map for the US with little spark bath within these hexagons. I created also a second version with little spark lines, um, and I would like to show you now my initial attempt to create this second version with, with, a line, with little spark lines. So like I said, I wanted to bring in more dimensions into my measures, um, but I did not know it in the first place, so let me show you my initial attempt. So I'm connecting to both data sources, to the Makeover Monday data set on minimum wages, and I'm also connected to a secondary data source with the hex map data, and I borrowed this, um, this data from Matt Chambers um, from his blog on hex, on, on hex maps. So my initial attempt was, I take my year, my dimension, and put it on columns, then I take my measure, it's the total of minimum wages, um, put states on detail, and I get all my line marks for the US. Then I'm bringing in my hex map data, and I put column on column and rows on rows, so quite easy. And when I now fit the view to the entire, um, to the entire view, you see the shape of the, the US already appearing. Now I'm formatting my divider lines. Yeah, I have my column divider and my row divider, and you see these dividers, they form some kind of grid. But these are not grid lines. I would say grid lines are the good lines, divider lines are the bad lines when it comes to custom visualizations. Because in the next step, I would have to add my shapes and the shapes, they cannot leave the cells formed by this grid. So I had to think about another way to, to execute my idea. And therefore, I first joined the data, and now I'm doing exactly what I just introduced. I try to integrate my dimensions, the column and the row dimension, into my measures. Therefore, I'm using first the year data from the year information from the original data set, and then I'm using the column field from the, from the hex map data. Yeah? And this is creating my X. I'm putting my X on columns. And this is unstacking my lines horizontally. So each state is in the right column. Then I calculate my Y coordinate I'm using the total. That means the measure. And again, the row data from the hex map file. And this is, again, an unstacking my lines vertically so each state is in the right row. And when I'm not bringing in now state on, on detail, you see, again, the shape of the US. I've also integrated two parameters to play with the positioning of the line charts. So I'm changing my um, column parameter to bring some space between the lines. And I'm changing my uh, row parameter to play with the scaling of, of my line charts. Yeah, so this is my almost close to, to the final product. Um, again, I'm formatting my 
divider lines, the column divider and the row divider, big and black. So this is the column divider, and then again the row divider, and you see the grid has gone. That's the idea of everything as a scatter plot. We've integrated the, the dimensions, um, and now we are fully flexible within the cell to do whatever we want. We can connect points, we can add shapes, and be just creative. And I use, for example, exactly this technique in one of my visualizations that I created for an Iron Vis feeder um, for the Tableau conference in Europe. And this is a very information-rich and dense visualization. Um, so let us focus on this object in the middle. This is the world tile map using, like I've said, exactly the technique this, that I've just introduced. Now we have these shapes, the circles, representing the carbon footprint of the world's countries, for example, the US in the top left, and China almost in the top right, the, the, biggest, um, the biggest circles. And we have this little spark bars for all the countries in the world, and uh, there we have the change um, over time for the Earth Overshoot Day. And believe it or not, so we heard yesterday that maps were, were stacked on top of each other, but this is just one single sheet in Tableau using this technique. And like I've said, you can create very information-rich and dense uh, visualizations with this technique. Yvette already mentioned data densification. This is our third technique. You will have already come across data densification when you have gone beyond show me. You've maybe added curvy designs, to, uh, curvy aspects to your designs using um, curvy lines or curvy polygons. Or you've created a radial bar chart. Or any other visualization where the original data was simply not enough. There are, again, many, many people in the community that have already written and talked about data densification. I'm quoting um, Ken Flerlach here. He did a wonderful video, an introduction to data densification earlier this year. And just yesterday, I attended Jonathan Drame's session where he talked about data densification. And I absolutely recommend to, to, to read about the stuff they have, uh, they have written. Again, the main idea here of data densification is to add extra points to let your design idea come to life. Let me try to explain it in, in a very simple example. Let's assume our data, our original data, had only one record. Here you see it on the left side. And now in the first example, your design idea would be to visualize the data coming from this record as a rectangle. You cannot draw a rectangle with just one point. You need four points to draw a rectangle. Or you maybe want to draw a curve. For a curve, you need even more than four points. Now, some authors recommend, for example, for a sigmoid curve to use 49 points. For longer curves, you might need more points. For shorter curves, you might need less points. So this is the case where we need data densification. We have to add extra points to our original record. How can we add extra points? Uh, there are basically two methods around, and both methods require a model, a so-called model data set with data created outside of Tableau. For the first method, we have to put pre-densified um, it includes pre-densified data. That means we have in this model set as many rows as we need points for our, for our design. Yeah, that means four rows for the rectangle for shape and 49 or more or less for the curve shape. The second version only needs two points to define a range. And within this range, um, we can create bins in, in Tableau at a later stage, and this will artificially densify the data. For both techniques, we create a Cartesian product. Uh, that means we combine every line, uh, every row with every row, every row from the main data set with every row from the model data set. So this is 
the technique to create data densification. So you might ask, okay, is there an example? So having one record um, creating, or, or, and you want to create a rectangle, yeah, there is, and uh, I did a project last year where this was exactly the setting. At that time, I was playing around with the map box features in Tableau, um, and then I had the idea, ah, let's look into centers of global capital cities. Like we always do, <laughs> yeah? Um, and the idea was not just to have a look at these centers, but to calculate a certain area within these centers, to just um, yeah, compare these centers and to, look, uh, to, to have a look at what it looks, looks like. And therefore, I drew bounding boxes. Um, I hope you can see it. These are these yellow um, boxes, um, and in this case, this would be uh, 1.5 square kilo kilometers. Um, yeah. As I said, I had one record, the, my data point, the center latitude and the center longitude for, for these global capital cities, and to draw a bounding box, it needs five points. Now, you might, need, you might think four, but it's actually five because we're starting at the bottom left, and we go to the bottom right, top right, top left, and we have to go back to the bottom left to close the loop. That means I had to densify my data. I needed four points instead of one, and you see it in the, in the, in the top left corner of the slide, I, uh, I added five copies of my data. Um, and with this, for, for these five copies, I was then able to calculate the coordinates, that means the longitude and the latitudes for these five points very easily by just creating two calculated fields where I defined for each of my five points um, the, the coordinates. So this was quite a fun project. Uh, I learned a lot about spatial things as well, um, and a pleasant side effect was when I got it working and I combined everything with a parameter, I was able to zoom multiple maps simultaneously. So this might get a little bit hypnotic, but uh, I still like it. So maybe at this point of our presentation, just re um, remember we have published a blog with all the resources. There are detailed blog posts explaining everything that we have showed so far. That was so impressive, Klaus. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the next technique. When you start to draw in Tableau, it happens that you want to give a curvy aspect to your design. Am I right? And let me say to you, you can use and design any type of curve you desire in Tableau. I'm quoting Jeffrey Sheffer here, and please follow him, read his articles, because he already wrote in depth about this topic. Let me explain how to draw a curve in Tableau. I invite you to read some articles from Chris DeMartini on Databig blog, where he developed some basic function using D3 JavaScript library, or Jeffrey Shuffler blocks where he compares the use of different uh, type of curves on the Valon Sankey diagram. Okay, so let's focus on the left side on the screen. We can easily connect two dots using line mark and got a straight light. But drawing a curve is a bit more complex because Tableau doesn't draw a curve out of box. Thus, we will need to densify our data like Klaus just explained earlier. It means that we will take those two points and add several points in between such that when connected, they form a curve line. Let's see step by step. The first step, of course, find the curve that best fit for your design. The second step, fix the range of your extra points because the different functions work well with different uh, ranges. For example, sigmoid works well with minus six and plus six, while logit works well with zero and plus one. Then you need to develop the function in Tableau and don't be afraid of it, that won't be the most uh, difficult part of this process. And finally, you need to adopt the formula in Tableau and just use the line mark type with the right pass. I used the same process at one of my V4 social good submission. 
But before I show my Rose chat, I would like to recommend you to try Chris De Martin's Tableau Rose chat out and play with this workbook to understand how the rows must actually work. What is the amplitude? What changes when you change the key value? And don't worry, I promise that will be a lot of fun here. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so using the rows mass, how beautiful is this name, rows mass. Okay, so using the rows mass, I visualized the stats on women and women of color employed at 100 top tech firms. How we can read this visualization? Each form is represented by one flower. Let's look closer at the zooms <laughs> from flower. All right. The colors indicate the gender information. There are male and female workers. And the paddle shows the different ethnicities, Asian, black, Latin and white employers. And the size of a, a paddle represents the number of workers in a firm. Are you curious how we can make blooming chat in Tableau? Yeah. No? <laughs> or yes? <Yeah. laughs> Let me demonstrate it. And switch. All right. I was thinking a lot about what would be the best demo data for showing the rows mass. Now I'm gonna show you the gender proportion of TC19 speakers. You know the TC site is a public site, so with a little help I just scraped the data from it and using a Python script I categorized the name into gender information. And at this point I have to know that because of using a script there may be some misclassification at gender information because, yeah, the name itself cannot always tell the, the right uh, gender data. So please just focus on the technique. This is the base table. As you can see, it's super simple. We have data for gender, male and female. We have topics. And I just add a new field, the past field with one and 50 value because we need to densify the data between these values. All right, so let's go to the tableau. Okay, this is mine. <laughs> I am so lucky. We don't have too much time. That's why I, or I implemented the calculations, but I would like to throw them what they mean. And just again, we have gender information female and male. We have seven different topics like dashboard and design, data and analytics skills, and so on. This will be the key, the paddle coefficient. And this is an odd number. It's very important information because different calculation required for odd and even number. The rows value means the number of speakers, and I just normalized this uh, field. This is the norm rows value. I densify the data along the path. As I showed you earlier, uh, I just added the path field to the exam. And now each topic by gender has a range between 1 and 50. The rows index creates index along this bin field, and the rows amplitude means the length of each paddle. Let's look closer at the rows data. This is a discrete step size for discretizing the continuous range of angles from 0 to 2p. So now we have everything to calculate the x and y data points. Let's go to an empty sheet. All right, here is the Y and the X data point. So let's put the rows and the columns. As you can see, these are table calculations. So we need to compute using them to the topics. I just put it to the details. And again, the topics uh, means one paddle on the flower. The color indicates the gender information. 
let's put to the color shelf. I just change the mark type to line and add the pass rows because it tells Tableau how to connect the data points on the screen. All right. Now we can set the table of calculations. First, I am compute this uh, calculation to the rows bin in order to see what's happening on the screen. So this is not a flower I know. <laughs> Let's modify the calculations. As you can see, this is nested calculations. There are two fields, the rows amplitude, which means the length of paddle, and there is the rows index. We need to add the topics and just change the order. So I first I would like to compute it to the topics and then the bin field. And let's do the same modification on the X. So I just adding the topics, change the order, and it's still not a flower. <laughs> let's check why not. Yeah. Because there are only 1 and 50, we need to show the missing values between these two values and just put back to the bus and voila, <laughs> we have flower in Tableau. That's awesome, Yvette. So I use line, but if you want to see the field object, just use the polygon mark type. And let's see the final viz. So this is the gender disparities on the stage. 70, 30. Let's check by topics, data management. It's similar. Embedded analytics. Tableau at scale. Mm. <laughs> and just again, this is an approximate ratio. I wouldn't say that the number, this ratio is bad. But honestly, it's still a man's world. I really hope this gender gap will be smaller year after year. Thank you. Okay, let's switch back to our present. There we are. I am the technical guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Our last technique we would like to introduce is the layering technique. And I learned a lot about the layering technique in a project earlier this year that I did together with Ludovic Tavernier from France. And we did together a, a project on the rise of former German hero, tennis hero Boris Becker. Does someone still know Boris Becker? Okay, ah, <laughs> some. <laughs> um, yeah, and. Um, we use this technique to overlay different, several visualizations. And this is exactly the, the definition I'm quoting here by Krista Martini. And he says, building a number or layering is building a number of separate visualizations and then overlaying them. Again, let's have a short look at how to add actually layers. So I'm picking up my example from a few minutes ago. So again, we have one record, and now we want to create layers. That again means we have to add extra points. The first step could be to, lay, to, to build layers with points, yeah, to overlay several points. It is a, the example in the top. And this is, for example, something that Kevin Fleurlatch describes in his blog, and this is honestly one of the most influential blog posts from last year where he um, introduced the no polygons technique. Um, so and by overlaying different, uh, by overlaying points um, and he combines everything with shapes, you can create, for example, also flowers like we've just seen um, by Yvette. So this would be an easy example. Um, a more advanced example would be to overlay separate visualizations, like here the rectangle line combination. That would mean for our point, we would have to add in a first step extra points to draw a rectangle, we need four, um, and to add extra points to draw the curve, something like 49, and also two points to build out these layers. 
And then we have to combine everything, that means the, the original data, the, the, the densification, and the layering, and build again the Cartesian product. Like I've said, uh, we've used this technique in our Boris Becker Viz, and this was quite an epic project with lots of data, and I won't go into the details, um, I promise. Uh, but we used the layering technique in this part of the Viz where we visualized Boris' performance at Grand Slam tournaments from 1985 to 1989, and we are comparing his performance with the performance of his major components. Oh, no, components, opponents, I'm sorry. So this is actually layering. We have two different visualizations. We have the horizontal tournament trees. So these are all the matches from all the Grand Slam tournaments from 1985 to 1989. And we have a second visualization, uh, the bump lines, the, the vertical ones, visualizing again the performance of Boris and his opponents. And how did we accomplish this? In the first step, we created the tournament flows. And therefore, we used a, a huge database provided by Jack Sackman on, on GitHub. Um, and yeah, in the first step, we created a generic and fully functional tournament tree that works for all single elimination and exponential tournament structures. Uh, you can see it here. It works for draw size 16, 32, 64, 128. So we could use or visualize all the Grand Slam tournaments without building all these tournament trees manually. So this was quite fun, as you can imagine. And of course, we shared the math to create these tournament trees in a blog post. And then we, would, we wanted to go one step further. And uh, one day, we wanted to create something really special. And yeah, one day, Ludovic uh, sent me a message with this beautiful paint draft. And he told me about his dreams. Yeah, that's a little bit sad, Ludovic, but also me and Yvette, you too. We dream about visualizations. And yeah, his dream, our dream was to, to combine the tournament trees with a bump line. And believe it or not, we did it. Because yeah, like we've already said, you can create anything you want in Tableau. You don't believe it? Here's the proof. So this is just one single sheet having all the tournament trees in one layer and the bump line in the second layer. And we can bring in the first layer, the second layer, or show both layers at the same time. We ran into some performance issues on Tableau Public. Therefore, we, we played a little bit with the resolution, so we took away some points, and we, the curves were really, really small, and um, therefore, we didn't need all the points we originally thought we would need. And therefore, um, we have a, a, a third layer to play with the resolution. Yeah, we have two different visualizations, the tournament tree and the bump trees. And again, referring to what Yvette introduced, we are using two different curves, two different functions. The sigmoid curve for the, for the tournament trees and the logic function, logic function, which is actually the inverted um, sigmoid function, we use it for the bump lines. Yeah, so this is an incredible technique, super useful. I'm not sure if we could use it in business dashboards, maybe combine lines, uh, bars with, with, um, with curvy reference lines, um, but I'm not sure about it. Yeah, but again, super useful technique to, to create um, dense, again, and information-rich visualizations. Thank you. After this great example, let's see how we can use custom visuals in real life. Barcode. Believe it or not, it's inspired by barcodes. A user of well-known data set, the Superstore data set, and the Viz displays the different product category levels. The longer bar means the main category, while the shorter bar represents the subcategories within the specific category level and the widths of a bar represent the sales value. This view allows you to see at a glance the proportions and differences across multiple hierarchy levels. 
And as Klaus every time says, everything is a scatter plot, I would say that everything is a polygon. These are not simple bars. These are eventually becoming polygons. And why is it so useful? Oops, sorry. Because only the polygon solution looks good for any automatically generated layouts in Tableau. As you can see, these two examples, on the left side you can see a desktop layout, and next to it, generated phone layout. How we can make polygon bars in Tableau? We need to define the four corner points of this bar or rectangle form. I use the union solution for it. But before we calculate the X and Y uh, data points, we need to merge together the main category and the subcategories into one field. I use the first two tables for the main category and the other two for the subcategory levels. And then a little formal distinction, the main category gets a bullet point, as you can see on the header line. Now we are ready to plot the four corners of the bars. A simple index function helps to define the corner points, and it will work as a pass when we calculate the x, x and y uh, field. So the abstract assigns a different height to the different product levels. The main category height uh, is uh, 1.3 units at this example, of course, and the subcategory is only one unit. And the x means the sales value, so at this uh, data point, I just use this measure, but of course you can use any other value. It depends on you what would you like to see or analyze on your report. And now we are ready to put everything, I mean the calculated field to the rows and columns on a new sheet with the header information. And the last step just change the mark type to polygon. And we have an own barcode in Tableau. If you are interested in creating this uh, polygon solution, for example, voter for chat, I would recommend to check the right process on Klaus's uh, blog post. And I think uh, those clients who see uh, their reports on different layouts will love this solution, and of course they will love you because you will develop that report. <laughs> Great, thank you, Yvette. So, I really feel we need to calm down a little bit after seeing all these exciting custom visualizations. And my last example is actually a line chart. What, I always, what I've always found quite unsatisfying is to encode change in line charts. Like, for example, highlight all the month with a decrease in sale or highlight the month with the biggest increase in sale. Because what happens when you, when you calculate the difference and put difference on, on color, you get these transitions that you can see here on the slide. Um, I'm still not um, so long in the market for uh, using Tableau. Um, my, my maybe naive idea was I would like to have it this way, to have clear, distinct coloring of the, of the period between the two marks. And this is actually not possible in Tableau by default. Um, and this is yeah, because of how Tableau actually sets the marks and where the mark is defined. Um, yeah, this looks not really exciting. Um, so I might, made a fancy version as well. Um, so this is maybe a little bit more custom-like. Yeah? So here I'm highlighting the, the biggest increase and the biggest drop um, of sales by, by category. Yeah? Um, so you probably want to know how to create such line charts, um, and that's my favorite part. Now I'm switching to Tableau. Uh, this one? Yeah, that is. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, again, I'm on start, on the starting point, um, and uh, let me maybe make this transition uh, a little bit bigger. So you can see here now, um, I, I, I highlighted all the month with a decrease in sales, 
And whenever the curve goes down, this transition begins. So it goes, it starts here, has it maximum at the mark, and then it goes back to gray in the month where we have an increase. Um, you can also use difference on sales. You may have seen something like this already, um, exactly the same problem. We have this transition in size in this case. Um, yeah, to create this advanced line chart, maybe, I had to densify my data um, to create three points for every mark in my data. Um, and then I integrated, I first calculated a month position where I just calculated a position, my x-coordinate, for each of my three um, partitions of my data, and I, I integrated a little parameter to offset the first copy to the left and the, sec the third copy to the right. So we have three points for each month, um, and I labeled them by um, using the, the, um, my partitions, so from zero, one, and two. This is the first step. Then the second step, um, I'm, I calculated a variable sales field where I use table calculations uh, that indicate whether the curve goes up or goes down. Yeah, again, for each of my partitions, here we have partition zero, partition one, partition two, I'm saying, okay, if this is the case, then, then do that. If that is the case, then do this. And I'm using my variable sales here. And when I now again add my difference, you see, um, and I will show you what happens. So we still have these transitions, like here between zero and one, or here between zero and one. We have also transitions, for example, here between one and two. But we have never transitions between two and zero. And the points, um, the, the distance between two and zero, this is my, yeah, this will be my line chart in the, in the final, um, at the final point. And the only thing I now have to do is to change the parameters I, I've, I've integrated into my measures. Um, and maybe a first step could be to set the parameters to zero. I will do that now. And this won't work. Yeah, we still have these transitions because Tableau is now aggregating over the, uh, the, the identical coordinates. And the idea or the trick maybe is to just set this parameter to a very, very small value. I'm setting them at 0 0.00001. And this is the magic. So now we are not aggregating anymore, we are just hiding these transitions um, to make them invisible. And they are still there, but we don't show them anymore. Yeah, and um, the next less, the last step would be to make it a little bit pretty, to format it, and then we have again our advanced line chart with clear and distinct um, indicators of uh, biggest rise and biggest drop in sales. And we can use the, the filters to look at the different um, years and, and categories. Thank you. We have made it almost to the end and to data night out. <laughs> we really hope you enjoyed the session today from us and we revealed all our tricks. We looked together at different techniques like Drawing with numbers, getting rid of grid, applying geometric functions, data densifications, and some layering techniques as well. And like we said at the beginning, if you want to find out more, just go to both our blogs and you can find all resources we have talked about today. Yeah. Um but maybe not all of the dashboards we have shown today, like this bandit bar chart. Um, maybe not most of, uh, not all of the dashboards are everyday dashboards. So for sure, you won't have so, you, you, you will not have so many use cases for, for such dashboards in your daily business. 
But again, the goal was to introduce the techniques that we use to create these visualizations. And of course, they can be everyday techniques. Yeah? They will help you to get a deep understanding of how Tableau works, and they will enrich your, your daily work with Tableau and will enable you to create um, yeah, awesome dashboards. Oh, that said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for attending our session. Thank you. Thank you.